is up, guys? It is the sports show, Bradley Walker, and welcome to the Walker Report, part of In the Zone Sports Talk Radio, part of NGSC Sports. Guys, remember the website. It's NGSCSports.com for all your current sports content. This show is sponsored by CreatingZenSpaces.com, the local choice in St. Petersburg, Florida, for house cleaning, organization, decluttering, and pet sitting. It's about finding the peace within you and adding comfort to your life. Remember, guys, Zen Spaces begins with you. Be kind to yourself and one another. We are also sponsored by Garrett's Carrots. Designer jewelry and lucky luxury accessories. Illuminate your inner self, shatter the trendy norms, and open up your world to a newfound level of confidence and an admiration. Garrett's Carrots. Designer jewelry and luxury accessories at GarrettsCarrots.com. Welcome in, guys. Uh, I had some good news uh, happen uh, earlier this evening. Um, if Kevin is watching this show, um, I guess starting the third week of January, um, all of the uh, shows, including this one, will be on a Roku channel um, that you guys can watch. We'll all be on television. Um, he's working out the uh, working everything out for that. Um, so, uh, um, Gerald, what's up, my man? I hope you feel better. I know he's suffering with uh, sinus infection. So, Gerald, I, I hope you're feeling better, buddy. Let me go ahead, guys, uh, and bring on my two ex- ex- very, very cool uh, <laughs> evening. Gentlemen, good evening. It's a pleasure to be esteemed. Good evening, Riley. Oops. Yes. Not yet. I, uh, I just found out today, too, there's going to be some um, big change for me next year. <laughs> um, uh, did you yeah. get fired? No, 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 no. I, 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 no. That had, couldn't, no. couldn't get that lucky, huh? I'm going – I'm looking <laughs> for – maybe another job soon. Um, okay. The oh. other thing is I just found out my roommate is moving back to Orlando. So I oh. will have to find a place to live. So that won't be oh, happening until August. That's not like it's going to happen. Well, you probably should get started on that now because, you know, yeah. yeah so I have, no yeah. time like the present. Right. I have to go ahead and get that started, but um, because, it's okay. Because August is like, out. August is eight months away until it's tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. I, there, there, there are some ideas that I have. I have to, you know, kind of get things set up, but um, we'll see. That's that's kind of the news in in my uh, my world. But um, I am currently watching the Cheez It Bowl. God, I wish I was there as a media member. Uh, FSU is winning by one point in the third quarter. Um, 18 to 17 over Oklahoma. Okay. So that's what Fair that is. Much. Um, yeah. Um, I was also watching the lightning ranger game. Uh, the Rangers are up one, nothing in after uh, one. Yeah, right here. Yeah, right here. So, yeah, he's watching it. Uh, yeah. So they keep me, you know, what, Lou, I'll keep this on the Florida state game. Let me know what's going on in a hockey game. And that way I can, sure. I can kind of keep it that way. Uh, real quick, too, guys, before we get into talking about college football, um, I tried a um, Arturo, uh, some kind of cigar, Arturo Ramiro or something. Okay. I enjoyed that it. So that was a um, friend, my best friend's dad bought him for me. So that cool. became one of my favorite ones. So I tried that yesterday. So um, I had a. If you guys want to, I figured we could go over the four different scenarios uh, with the two playoff games. Yeah. If anyone out there doesn't know, this Saturday, New Year's Eve, uh, just a couple of days away, we have two college we are here that will determine who will be in the national title. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Is the national title game the... Monday the 9th. Monday the 9th. Right. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So that is, that is the week before Martin Luther... King Day. Correct. Martin Luther King Day falls on the 16th this year. Yes. Believe you're right. Okay. Always the third so, Monday. Right. So now the two, the four teams that are left um, are number one, Georgia, number two, Michigan, number three, TCU, and number four, Ohio State got in by uh, the um, the committee voting them in. Um, but those four teams will be playing uh, the Michigan TCU game I think kicks off at four. Yeah, it does. Georgia Ohio State game kicks off at eight. Probably after eight. Yeah. Interception by the 
the Sooners. What will happen first, the ball dropping or the game being over? On Saturday night? Uh, well, if, it, if, 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 it was, if it was the Michigan-TCU game, no, I think no, that no. game's going to be – I'm not I'm saying it's not going to be out, but I think that game would be closer. But I don't think Ohio State – I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe Ohio State surprises all of us. I don't know, but – I, I just think, don't see Ohio State giving Georgia a game. Yeah. I kind of think that either both both the uh, semis are, are gimmies. Yeah. And, so, and I think I, I think so, especially listening to TCU talk. They talked a lot of junk yeah. over the last week, and I, you, that's never bodes well to put bullets and board material on, on the uh, – Jared, I, 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 I really do. <laughs> um, I just don't, I think that, you know, there's just a calm, cool confidence in both Athens and Ann Arbor right now. If you watch the media stuff, and there's a lot of talk from TCU and, uh, and, uh, Ohio State, a lot of run in your mouth. And I, I think that, I think it's, it's Georgia, Michigan. Yeah. Um, I really, I really do. I really do. I think it's Georgia by, by four. I was going to say, so let's say night. Well, I shouldn't call it a nightmare situation, but let's say I was TCU, TCU, Ohio State. Let's say is it's the, Ohio State. I, 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 okay. But then again, but you look at yeah, it, yeah. it's hard to say though, because, you know, if you think about it, you know, TCU beats Michigan, who beat Ohio State, who beat Georgia. So, I mean, it's really, it's really. I really think it's Ohio State in 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 that scenario. I think it's Ohio State, though. I, I think that I think that if, if TCU gets past uh, Michigan, they used up all the bullets and they're done. They're they're going to have nothing left left for George or for for Georgia or or Ohio State. I really do. I, I think that they'll have to pull out all the stops to beat Michigan on Saturday afternoon. I I, I really think. And, and I think that I think. Uh, I'm sorry. I thought Lou was trying to say something. That's why I stopped. I don't know, but because you know, I think the TCU Michigan game is going to be a lot closer than people think. I mean, you know, I don't. A TCU has has a very good offense, and I, I think it's going to be uh, um, you know, very good. So, I don't look at this game as you know as a runaway from Michigan at all. No offense to the Michigan fans out there, but you know I've, I've watched CCU play. That team is dangerous. I have a slight edge, but uh, if you think it's good, no dice. Uh-uh. I I don't I respectfully disagree with you. Um, I just don't think TCU has the uh, has the firepower to hang with Michigan. Not offensively. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, they haven't played a defense like Michigan. Um, it, it's see what Michigan does very well is let you have the have sixty yards. They'll give up a, a sixty an eight play sixty yard drive, but they're not chasing you. It's five yards in your tackle. It's five yards in your tackle. It's five yards in your tackle, and then in the twenties they bow up and make you kick field goals. Hey, go back and watch. Go back and watch the tape. Go back and watch the tape. the Illinois game, the Ohio State game, the Penn State game, the Michigan State game. They give up yards in between the tackles or in between the twenties, and 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 you can throw on the Michigan defense, but they're going to get up there and make the tackle. And I think that's the difference in the last two years, the last twenty-seven games of of Michigan football. And I was thinking about this before we came on the air, you know, going over my notes and thinking about what. I wanted to present as a as a Michigan guy and make my case why Michigan will will be in the playoff in, in the championship game. Um, is that the the problem with the Don Brown defense is he's got to have he's got to have a hog in the middle, right? Yeah. When you play a three or four um, style defense, you have to have that big dude in the middle. And when Mo Hurst was there. And, and I don't know, you know, maybe you know some of you people out there aren't aren't, aren't Michigan fans and, or aren't Big Ten guys, you know. Right. So Mo Hurst was he ended up 
being drafted by the Raiders, Raiders in uh, in the fourth round. But he's just a big right. dude. He could he could absorb a double team, right? And and when Mo Hurst leaves, and you don't have that big force in the middle who's taking up a double team where you can send blitzers off off the edge, where you can create wild and exotic blitz packages with your linebackers, and and you can leave your your corners out on the edge or out on uh, out on an island. Sorry, out on an island. And and you can you can bring this guy or bring that guy, and create mismatches up front and disrupt disrupt what this what the uh, what the offensive line is trying to do and get pressure on the quarterback and move him off his spot. Well, when you don't have a Mulhurst type guy, where you can where the offense can can single block everybody and leave a guy on a you know leave a guy on um not have to double someone, not have to double the, the nose, you don't have those, those blitz packages that go away. And the quarterback has that extra second. And it's very hard to play man coverage 60 times a day game. And, and I, I think CCU, I mean, they're not a bad football team, and I'm not taking them lightly. I don't think anybody in Ann Arbor is taking them lightly, you know. And and again, like I was, like mm-hmm. I've said for a couple of weeks now, is that this this is man football right now. This, this is men's football. You know, it, it's your best. It's your best sixty plays against our best sixty plays. It's it's our best sixty minutes against your best sixty minutes. Sure. And if you can't get up for this game, don't even bother coming into the locker room. If you need something, if you need to get, if you need help to get up for this game, if you need, if you need somebody to get you up for this game, you ain't got a pulse. Right. No, I, no. I, I again, I, you know, I, you know, I, I think, I think, um, I think Michigan and Georgia will be the two teams. I think it will be a closer game than last year's game was. Um, yeah. Michigan came in a little um, outmanned, and I Overzealous. think that they, mm-hmm. they were not prepared but, for what the bloods were too bright. What Kirby the, left, and the dogs had, yeah, yeah. Well, the, the dogs were the best team in the country last year, and no about it. The, the the lights were too bright. And I'm not, you know, I'm a Michigan guy, and I'm not, I'm not embarrassed. You know, we got beat by a better team. What, what do you want from me? Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take my gear off. I'm not gonna shame my, I'm not gonna shame my head. Shame. Help me here. What's the word I'm looking yeah, for? Right. Hang my head. I'm not gonna hang my head in shame. And you know they were a better team, and and you look at you know once once it got out of hand, Michigan's second Michigan's second team was better than Georgia's second team. When it got out of hand, and Georgia when Georgia had that big lead, you know if you look at the second half, you know, Michigan outscored Georgia in the second half. Unfortunately, it was we were so far behind that at that point the game was over. So and I and I think that. I think that giving, giving, getting a rematch against Georgia, and knowing what, knowing what we know now, like, yeah, you know, we're a year older, we're a year smarter, we're a year better than we were last year. We are a better team than we were last year, both in terms of record and on paper. I, I really, I really do believe that, and I, I think Georgia will win, but I don't think it's going to be a, I don't think it's going to be a smoke show like it was last year. No, um, I, I don't either, but I'll be honest with you. I, I think um, and, 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 I think the two teams, I think I think they're the two best teams in the country left. I really do, honestly. I know I, I, I think the, the committee gave Ohio State a second chance. And you know what? Yeah. Let's say for some off-the-wall reason they upset Georgia, right? And it's Michigan-Ohio State again. And I know that there are yeah. some Big Ten fans out there, especially Buckeye fans. I want that Want a second shot at Michigan? You know that they mm-hmm. want it because they think that they they played good enough to win the first time, but obviously they did not. That's yeah, they, they've been talking that for for four weeks. They've been saying five plays for four weeks. They've been saying five plays. Well, JJ McCarthy snatched your soul when when you went, when JJ McCarthy lowered his head and drug drug drug. That Ohio State safety for an extra eight yards. That was game. That was game right there. Game, set, match. Ohio State had nothing left. 
You want to go again? All I can think of is that scene from Inglorious Bastards. Every man in this outfit owes me a hundred Ohio State scouts. Come on, boys, let's go. I, 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 you know, Oklahoma just scored a touchdown. Is that 24 18 now? No, nah, they're going for two. Mm, 25 18. They make it, it seven. They got it. 25 18, make it seven. With 13, and there's still a lot of time left. There's 13 yeah. minutes left in the fourth quarter. So, okay. Yeah. But, um, no, 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 no. I agree. Right, I'm, right. Just, I'm just saying how cocky I know Ohio State fans are. They've been talking. They, when they played Florida, you know, in the national, this was many years ago in the national championship, right. I got harassed in my own state. In my own state, I got harassed by Buckeye fans. So yeah. I know how cocky right. they are. Um, many of them believe that football doesn't exist outside of Columbus, Ohio. Right. There's a lot of good programs well, outside of Columbus, uh, including the one north of Ann Arbor, number one of them, but also yeah. in Athens, USC, UCLA, Florida, Florida State. There's a lot of good programs out there that some of them are on down years right now, but we'll be back. You know, uh-huh. so. you know and I think you know, I, I'm not, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to besmirch TCU. I think they're a good football program. They've done, you know, Sonny Dykes earned his um, earned coach of the year. He was the best coach, and you know, he took a team that was not projected to be anything and has them in the playoff. And 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 well deserved. Um, do I think TCU is the third best team in the country? Personally, no. I, I don't think. I think. I think Alabama matches up better. I think USC matches up better. But they didn't do enough to get there. You know, this is that kind no. of that where the twelve team playoff would be would be really. It's going to be really interesting when we have that expanded playoff. Personally, I think six. I, I think twelve is too many. I wanted to see six. I think mean, you take the top six, and and everybody else is uh, next year. You know, mm-hmm. I think six would have been perfect. I think six would have been perfect. I think last week, you know, Christmas weekend, you have, yeah. you know, you have the prelims, and this week you have the semifinals, and then the week after you have the finals. Yeah, uh, I think that's 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 the way I think it. That's why I would. I think six would have been perfect, personally. I think 12 is just too many. Yeah, it is. Is that because we're down? Yeah, Gerald, get some good have, have, have a good one. Well. We'll, see you next, we'll see you in a couple weeks. Yep. But, um, yeah, I mean, again, like I said, I think, yeah, I think, you know, when it comes down to it, I think it's going to be Georgia and Michigan. Um, I think you know what, and, and you know what, both games might be closer than we're all thinking too. I mean, I'm not going to say that, um, you know, TCU has the offensive firepower, but they don't have the defense to hang with Michigan's offense. Michigan has a better defense, and again, this is what I heard on the radio today from a guy that's local on um, Tampa radio. Actually, he does his shows in Orlando. He's mm. a Michigan fan, and he says that. He believes that the score will be very close in the first half. Michigan yeah. make adjustments, and that's when the game will be decided. Get out of hand. He said that TCU will not be able to readjust. If, if, if that's what he told me. He said really? on the radio this morning on the way back. I was listening on the way. This is like seven, eight o'clock this morning, and he said that. He said, yeah, he goes, it'll be close in the first half. TCU will keep it close. But come the second half, Michigan will make adjustments. Once we have all year. Have the firepower to, to match up. So, you know, that that's, that's fine. You know, I think that's – and I think I really honestly believe it's going to happen in the Georgia-Ohio State game. I think the same thing is going to – same scenario. I think Ohio State will keep now mm-hmm. the one weakness that Georgia has on defense is they do give up the over the top plays. That's where Ohio State seems to relish in that in the, those type of plays. But right. I know Kirby will adjust as he always does. And again, I just think it's the same thing. I think Ohio State will keep it close in the first half, and then in the second half, Georgia will make an adjustment, and Ohio State won't be able. Kind of very similar to the Michigan game. 
where it was oh, cold was- in the first half. And then Michigan said, okay, we've had enough of this shit. We're going to yeah. we're gonna take the game over, and they did in the second yeah. half. So. Ohio State makes too many mental mistakes. And the pressure gets to Ohio State. And this has been this has been a, a bugaboo in the Ryan Day era. Yeah. Nope. Is that Ohio State, you, you never, when, when, when Urban Meyer was there, say what you will about Urban Meyer, and I have and I will, but when Urban Meyer was there, it was discipline. Discipline was first. You didn't see them taking bad penalties. You didn't see them making mental mistakes. You didn't see them patrol starting, jumping off sides, headbutting a guy eight yards out of bounds for no reason. You know, you didn't see that kind of behavior from an Ohio from an Urban Meyer led Ohio State team. And and Ryan Day when and, and Ryan, Ryan Day needs everything to go right. Ryan Day can't handle adversity. And if, if, if Georgia comes out and punches Ohio State right in the mouth and they get down 14 nothing quickly, it's going to be a long day. If Ohio State can't move the ball, can't, can't generate something offensively against, um, against Georgia, if they, can't make a, if they can't take steps, make strides, and be successful against Georgia's, Georgia's defense, it's going to be because as goes C.J. Stroud, so goes so goes Ohio State, and and it's funny when you look at Ohio State. You know he wasn't, but he didn't play bad against me. He, had, he was thirty-one for forty-eight for like three hundred and fifty some odd yards and two picks. You know right. he threw two bad picks late in the game, two 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 crushing interceptions. Yeah, and 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 you you know talking about TCU and you know can they. Can they weather the storm that that is Michigan's second half? Because I, cause I, like right. you, like you said, like you said, they they may be able to hang around in the first half and be within a, a score, you know, a score or two, and not necessarily you know ten or fourteen, but but you know six or eight, you know, they may be down twenty one right. thirteen at the half. And can they can they can they make the the adjustments that Michigan has made all year in the second half? And you know, you look at even. Even in the Illinois game, the, the game that was was the most that was in the most jeopardy, and in the Maryland game, you know Maryland had a late score that made it closer than it actually was. Um, but mostly the I, the Illinois game is Illinois's or Illinois, sorry, not Illinois, because that's not a word. Illinois, um, I have family in Illinois, so um, yeah, they, they get on to me about that. But um, in the Illinois game, um, potato, potato. Anyway, um, <laughs> in, in the Illinois game, you know, Blake Corum gets hurt and Donovan Edwards was out. And, you know, Michigan right now is very much a pick your poison offense. You know, we, we, we shown the last two, the last two games and not necessarily the last two weeks, but the last two games we played, um, cause we haven't played in a, a month now is that, um, we can throw the ball. We can throw the ball deep. And and when I when I have the maturation of JJ McCarthy over the last four weeks, where at the end of the Illinois game they said, "All right, bud, it's your game to go win," and they took the, they took the training wheels off of him and said, "Go win us a game," you know. And and it's really and then in Ohio State the run game wasn't there. It was you know it was being stopped at ten yards at the half, but we were right there. We were right there with them. And you know JJ McCarthy threw the team on his back and said, "I got this, boys." Let's go win us a ball game, and you know, and 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 then the same thing with the Purdue game. You know, it was you know every hands on deck, and and you know in the in the Big Ten title game, it was all hands on deck. It was a it was a team it was a team effort, and I, I think you see the same thing from Georgia against Ohio State's team effort. You know, and 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 Georgia is a very well built football team, and yes, and Ohio State is a collection of individual talent. Right. Ohio State's got five stars across the board. Five stars across but the board. They don't have that team mentality that it takes. That the, the Urban Meyer Ohio State team Meyer, Ohio were State teams. teams. And, and and the Ryan Day Ohio State teams are a bunch of players. They got they got five stars across the board, but they're just but but everybody's out there for themselves. Right. 
Uh, the just real quick, guys. FSU just got a touchdown and tied the game, so it's twenty-five, twenty-five. Um, but uh, and I see the hockey game. Lou is one to one. Braden points scored a goal. Uh, the goal got called back, so it's now it's still called back. Up. Okay, they're wearing I'm those ugly, back. disgusting Sorry. third, ugly, disgusting third uniforms tonight at home. So uh, yeah. yes, I bring that. Which is always, I hate which is always a sin anyway. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously, so let's say, for example, Ohio State, Michigan, does they end up having a rematch? Ohio State beats Georgia. Um, and then we could talk about the Georgia TCU matchup, say TCU upsets. But I think we already kind of touched on that. You said that if they beat Michigan, yeah. they'll have nothing left in the tank, which I agree with because think about this you play Saturday and you have what a week. Eight days. Eight days to try to regroup. I, I mean, again, I'm not dissing on the Horn Frogs by any means of the imagination, but they're the Cinderella team. And we all right. know what happens is Cinderella, she loses her shoe at midnight, yes. and it is what it is. But I think either it's if it doesn't happen against Michigan, it will happen against either – it will happen against Georgia or Ohio State. I think I how you look at it, They'll be they, – they, they will have used everything. Again, I know when they've come back, how many times this year have they come back the last minute the field goal and um, – They had fire drill in that one game against – was it Baylor, I think it was? Yeah, they had to come back. It was back. absolute fire drill at the end of the game. Yeah. The, the, the rush to kick team out there and kick – The field goal unit out there, yep. Because yeah. they, they had because they had to use up – they had to use everything up to get – you get back in that game. They were down like twenty-eight to ten. They, they, there were several games, and they've been down by multiple scores midway through the fourth quarter, and had to use everything to get back into the game. And correct. And, and no matter which team they face, whether it be Georgia or Ohio State uh, or or Michigan, even Michigan, I just don't see Michigan. You know, Michigan is a team that's built built for the for for the fourth quarter. Right. A team that's going to keep coming at you. Is going to keep hitting you in the mouth and just going to keep hitting you in the mouth. And there's no, there's, there's no rope of dope with Michigan. There, there's no, there's no weathering the storm because the storm's just not going to stop. Yeah. You know, look at the, look at the Ohio State game. You know, um, and you know the thing about it is, is a, it's a, it's a credit to Sean Moore and and as off his offensive line and um, the co-offensive coordinators and their ability to turn it around in a week. Change the game, change the entire game plan. Turn it around in a week, hand Jay to the keys and say, Go win us a ball game. And he executed. Right. You know, and the, again, like I said, the maturation process of, of JJ McCarthy, the ability to take a little bit off the ball. You, know, you go look at, at the one, the first throw to, to CJ, no, not CJ, sorry, um, uh, Cornelius Johnson, the, the, the back shoulder throw that was a, a 10 yard out that he turns into a 65 yard touchdown. And then the second throw, which he just it, JJ just puts a little bit of touch on it. It's a little bit short. CJ, keep calling him CJ. I'm just gonna call him CJ for the rest of the day because it's more complicated trying to correct myself. <laughs> CJ makes an adjustment for the ball, and and it drops into his hands because you know early in the year, it, you know early even early in the Ohio State game, everything was a foot over everyone's head. It was high and outside. Everything was high and outside. Because he was trying to throw the ball, he was trying to throw the ball 100 miles an hour when 85 would have got you there. You know, it's it's a kind of a it's something like you know, there's a uh, Daryl Waltrip and that's read, read his book years ago, it's a lifetime of going around in circles, and um, he was talking he was talking to uh, Kale Yarbrough first time he had ever been at um, Darlington, and and he asked Kale, hey, can you go down into turn one? Wide open, and Kel said, "Sure, you can." Mm -hmm. So he goes down to turn one, wide open, and, and about about total his car. He saves it, brings it down. He's like, "So I, I thought you could go down in that corner, wide open." Said, you can. I'm not gonna, but you can. And 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 to me, that to me, you know, is you know, slow down to go faster. You know, JJ has slowed down. He's not trying to whip the ball everywhere. And when when he's when he's when he's taking a little bit off, not a lot, just enough. Where the balls aren't so hot, and and you see this in a lot of big arm guys that, that throw the ball and have a lot of drops, is that they try to throw the ball, they try to throw every ball just as hard as they possibly can, 
mm-hmm. and they are either the ball hits the receivers and it's just too hot to handle, or it's a foot over their head. You know, they take just take a little bit off, and that ball, that ball, you know, it may not be an eighty, you know, it may not be an eighty yard touchdown on everyone. Yeah, the defender might catch up, but it's a forty five yard catch. It's a twenty five yard catch. Not every not not every throw downfield is to the far sideline from the near hash. You don't have to make across the street the field the cross the field style throw if if you're if you're sitting in the pocket and you've had two full seconds and and you know, or kind of you know Mike Leach type um four verts, you know, if you're even and leaving, you know, and you got that high post where and then the receiver's got a step and you just need to lay the ball up lay the ball out and let him go get it. And, and you know, you put a little bit of touch on the ball. You put a little, you take a little bit of mustard off of it, and and the, and the receiver can make an adjustment and catch the ball. Yeah, you know, eight, se- six, seven times the defender catches up, but it's still a 30, 40, 50 yard play, which is absolutely devastating when you're a defense. You know, you're an absolute. You're you played perfect textbook coverage. You've got the receiver locked up. But the but the quarterback puts the ball where where only his guy can go get it, and he doesn't put so much mustard on it that he can't make the catch. That, and then the receiver makes the catch, and it's it's outstanding. Mm-hmm. And everybody marvels, oh, what a catch! And it's like you know, and that having that, getting those guys on the same page where okay, this is how much this is this is how much I have to throw the ball to get there. But if I throw it this much, it's too much. If I don't throw it, if I throw it this much, it's not enough. And that's really, again, like I said, you know, the maturation process of J.J. McCarthy and, and, and what we've seen. And, and I, expect, I expect big things from J.J. McCarthy um, over the next two weekends and going forward as he, as he again, continues to mature and grow and become a much, a much more confident, polished passer. I think one of the, the strengths um, of that Michigan offense is their running game. I know uh, your top running back is out. He's not going to play, but – Correct. The other, the guy, who's who's your running back? That the little guy that was is going to be out. Um, I like for him. Yeah. For him? yeah, yeah, he's going to be out. Um, but the other guy is just as good. <laughs> so if not better. If not, yeah. So they yeah. they're they're not going to lose a step there. No. TCU is going to have their hands full trying to figure out. Okay, do we stack eight in the box and try to? Well, I, I really think TC if TCU plays their their base defense, I think it matches up. It could match, but the problem is, is that you're not you're not just you're not facing a Big Twelve offense. You're facing Sean Moore and the uh, is it Joe Moore? Is it the Lineman Award? The award winning two time defending Joe Moore winning offensive line, the Remington Award winning center. You know. If I was if I was TCU's defense defensive coordinator, I wouldn't do anything different than I've done all year. You know, at this point, you got nothing. You know, you try to throw a wrinkle in there. You try to do something you don't do, and you're going to get burned. And ask Ohio State. Ask Ohio State how that worked out for them. They tried to run. They tried to run schemes that they don't run, mm-hmm. and they got picked apart. Mm-hmm. And, and 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 all it takes is one good throw, one good throw, and JJ McCarthy's on, and. And then the, then the offensive line, you know, in Michigan is just is is they're 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 a bot, they're like Tyson Fury, right? Yeah, they have knockout power, but they're an excellent boxer too, right? And they can box with you. They don't, they, you know, you know. And I think I think TCU, Ohio State are more Deontay Wilder, where they're they're looking for one punch. They're they're they're, they're not trying to box you. They're looking for one punch. You know, but if they if they make if they make good solid contact with that one punch, it can be lights out. And Georgia and Michigan right. are, are more are more Tyson Fury, for want of a better analogy. Um, but and you know they 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 they're great boxers. They they're, they're great. Yeah, of course they have that knockout power. CJ can get over the top. Donovan can get hit, hit home runs. But they're just going to keep coming. You know they're going to pick their spots. They're going to pick their spots, and when they have an opportunity. Yeah, they're gonna throw a haymaker, but they're not looking to set up a haymaker off of every single jab. And and I think mm-hmm. I think that's that's the big problem with Ohio State, especially Ohio State against Georgia. They're gonna be looking to set up set up that big shot because they got Marvin Harrison Jr., C.J. Stroud, and, and and you know that's where they're that's their go to. 
is that is that is that power shot. They're looking to set that up off of every 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 step, every jab, every body shot. They're looking to come over the top and just knock you out. And and I think Georgia, you know, you, you said Georgia is susceptible to the over the top stuff, but I don't. I think that Georgia's offense is good enough to beat the Ohio State that if if it turns into a track meet if 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 it's 45 42 46 44 I think Georgia has enough firepower to stay with Ohio State I, I think Georgia is, is well served in a track meet against Ohio State you think but too with the game king off at four o'clock eastern time but one o'clock local time in Arizona I know Michigan plays a lot of twelve o'clock games. I think that favors them that that game is starting at one. Uh, I was thinking the same. I was thinking the other. The other thing I was thinking is that you're not looking up. You're not looking ahead. Right. Correct. You don't know who you get. Yeah. You don't you know, know who you get. Game. So you're. So if you yep. win. Now you go into the locker room. And go okay. Now, all right. We're either going to play a team that we played already this year, or Indeed. we play the team we played last year. Yep. So yeah. So it's 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 solid. Right. You know, you got you got two narratives, right? You got two narratives. If 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 Michigan wins, if Michigan wins, you got two narratives. And and you know, the nice thing about it being the early game is you're not looking ahead to. You don't have a trap like and you know, especially playing a team like TCU being the nightcap would be worse because you know it turns into a bit of a trap game. Because you, you're expected to win. You're a seven-point favorite. You've won everything so far. You beat your biggest rival. You're you're in the playoffs, and now you're going to go face Georgia. Let's say Georgia wins, right? And you can you might start to overlook an Ohio State. Or, or not, I'm sorry, a TCU. You overlook a TCU a little bit and, 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 and forget the focus and slip and drop one. Right. And so I like being, I like being the day game. I like being the afternoon kick, the 430 kick. Or four o'clock kick, sorry. Like I said, oh, I was to talk about the guy that earlier that was talking about Michigan making an adjustment the second half. He said that he liked the fact that a lot of Michigan's games start at noon. So they're an early team, you know. So it might be better because think if they had the night game at eight, it would be a five o'clock kick. Right. Time in Arizona. Right. Um, and so that's weird. I mean, that's weird for a college football game to kick right. off. I mean, even USF, mm-hmm. their kickoffs were between three and four o'clock in the afternoon. We didn't have a yeah. five o'clock kickoff. That's just a weird time to have a kick. Um, yeah, FSU got a turnover and turned it into a touchdown. They lead thirty-two twenty-five. What a game! Quarter. Uh, Oklahoma fumbled the ball. Mm. Um, real quick, I mean, we can go, guys. Um, here's the lines in both of the games. Um, you have. Um, in the Michigan TCU game, the Wolverines are a seven and a half point favorite. The over under is fifty eight and a half. Hmm. I'm gonna take Michigan the points in the over. Okay. I agree with that. I'll take Michigan, but uh, I think just about. I think that. Um, I agree. I agree with that. Um, I think, like I said, I think I, I agree with Adam too in the other game. I think if it gets into a firefight between Georgia and Ohio get- State, Georgia has the firepower. Stenson Bennett's a perfectly – capable quarterback, they have weapons offensively, and they have one of the top defenses yes, in the nation. Do. So they, they're going to be ready. And like I said earlier, they you know the weakness is the over-the-top play. Well, I'm sure Kirby knows that. I'm sure Kirby's going to make yeah. adjustments. Um, and I know yeah, how Kirby's going to play it smart. Play it smart. Um, play it I saw smart. what you did there. It's, my question is, can the Ohio State defense slow down Georgia's offense? That's the question, uh, you know, because Georgia's going to slow Ohio State down offensively. They may let them score points, and I think right. Michigan's going to let TCU score some points too. But in the end of the day, 
when you flip the script, can the other defense keep the other offense out of the end zone? So cool. can Georgia, can Ohio State's defense keep Georgia out of the end zone? Is the, or mm-hmm. off the scoreboard, it doesn't ramp to be a, you know. Oh, well, keep them out of the end zone. Force all, force them to kick field goal. Right. I don't know. I really don't know. Obviously, if I knew that, I'd put money on it, and then, you know, we'd be doing this show together live. <laughs> True. Right. But, I mean, we can't be any worse than Colin Coward, though. <laughs> None of us no, picked the didn't. Broncos to go to the None of us picked the Broncos to go to the Super Bowl like that ass clown. No. <laughs> he's on um he's on the sports station that I listen to once all the shows are over locally. Uh how how we have it is we have local radio from six to nine. Then from nine to noon is Dan Patrick. Then we have local radio okay. from twelve to three and then three to six. seven. Three to seven. There's, it's a four hour show. But back. once that show is over at seven, they air Colin Cowherd show. And if you're in the car long enough, you can actually hear the whole show all over again. And I've been in the car driving and so where's it seven o'clock? You gotta deal with a schmuck. Well, I mean, I, I so he picked Denver to go to the Super Bowl. Denver, I think, right now is what gonna pick. Two or three in the draft, yeah, something like that. Draft, something like that. Um, Houston has a top pick. That's not a shot. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, yeah. again, if if I had money, you know, mm-hmm. and then again, the, the the line in the Georgia game is the Bulldogs are a six and a half point favorite. The over under is sixty two. So the gamblers think there's going to be some points. That's thirty a piece. If you go at yeah, it, thirty one. Do you think Ohio State can score thirty points on that Georgia defense? They don't give up. I think, but I think I think Georgia can score forty. I think Georgia yes. can score forty. Uh, I, I, I can score forty. So that's going to be the question: Can Ohio can Georgia, State keep them out of not. the zone, and then can they score enough points to keep to keep with the Bulldogs? Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's that's the that's the, the you know that's the fun of the game, right? You know, yeah. if the games were played on paper, well, yeah, they were played on paper. We'd all we'd all be right. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot percent right mm-hmm. on a lot of things, but uh, yeah, no, it, it doesn't it doesn't work like that. So. You know, and the, you know, I, I honestly, I think the I think it's going to go pretty much the way everybody expects it to go. Yeah, all right, Georgia, Georgia by at least a touchdown, Michigan by at least a touchdown. Um, and and I think we'll be talking Georgia, Michigan next weekend or yeah. next Thursday, and yeah. and you know we're gonna what what can Michigan do differently that no one else has done this year to stop to slow down Georgia? You know, I, I think like I said at the beginning of the when we when we first came on the air is like what Michigan does really well is bow up in the red zone. You know, and and it is something that I talked about last year going into the Ohio State game, uh, in twenty twenty one. It was, I'm happy to give up an A play, six-minute drive. Mm-hmm. It's going to keep you out of the end zone. I'll give up a six-play, eight-minute drive. Yeah. Or Oklahoma touchdown. Mm. I'll tie to 32, pending the point. Yeah, they just got the t- uh, 12-yard rushing touchdown, so they're now they're a two-point conversion away from tying the game. Oh, no, I'm sorry. All they got is to get an extra point to tie the game. They don't have to go for two. Okay. It's 32 um, so much right now. So they can they can go for two and try to go for the win or go you for the win. Extra. They'll be a chicken. Pick the point and go to overtime. Could go. Yeah, they're gonna they're lining up for the extra point. It's so weird to see oh, uh, college yeah. football There's, where they have the chip shot extra point, but in the NFL they make you kick a thirty yard field goal to make the extra point. It's weird. Uh, I like the NFL rule personally. Do you think that maybe they should change it in college? I would I would like to see college move the extra point back another five yards. Maybe not the full maybe not the full Monty there for the NFL, but I'd like to see it be a little more interesting. A little more there's a little more in the NFL there's a little bit more oh, you know, it's a little bit more interesting the extra point. Yeah. And I like the more interesting extra point of the NFL. Yeah. Right. Personally. Um 
But no, like I was saying about you know, I you know what I've watched from the last in the last twenty seven Michigan games, and and what I really what I really think is interesting is the fact that Michigan will give you, you, you know, to work for it. We're not going to chase. They're going to make you work for it, and we're not going to chase. Like, mm-hmm. like our our linebackers, our corners, our safeties, they are swarming to the ball. Even if you make a five yard play. Our, we're, our defensive linemen aren't running after the play because our linebackers and our secondary are coming up and making a stop. Yeah, mm-hmm. we might give up. 50, we might give up a six play, fifty five yard or six play, fifty five yard, five and a half minute drive. But inside the twenties, and we're also really good inside your twenty. Right. And we're really good at getting you off the field in the fir- in the first twenty yards. I'm really good at keeping you out of the end zone in the last twenty yards. Right. So we might give up. We might give up eighty yards. You know, we might give up an eight play, eighty yard, seven minute drive, but it's seven three. It's seven three with two minutes left in the first quarter. Mm-hmm. And we're going on. We'll go down, kick a field goal, make it seven ten, make it three ten three, with eight minutes left in the first in the second quarter, and then we'll give up another. We, again, we might give up a forty yard drive. We might give up a four minute forty yeah. yard drive. But you're kicking another field goal, and it's ten. It's ten six. We're gonna go down. We're gonna score a touchdown to go into the locker room, and we're getting the ball out in the second half. Well, I also think we're the ball coming. I think in both games, but I think that's gonna come down. You made a key point there. I think for the Buckeyes and T and the Horn Frogs, I think it's gonna come down to when they have the ball, they have to score touchdowns can't just rely on field goals because you're not going to be a Michigan. You're not going to be a Georgia on yes. field goals. That's not. And hoping that you can stop those, those juggernaut offenses. Correct. So they have to score touchdowns when they have the ball. You mm-hmm. have to win, score touchdowns. You have to win the turnover battle. If they're both mm-hmm. going to win, they're going to ha- they both have to win the turnover battle because if you are turning the ball over to either one of those teams, you're you're really digging yourself. You might as well put the nail in the coffin early. Yeah, because you can't overcome. Yeah, TCU. Turnovers and like TCU that. or Ohio State have a couple of early turnovers. You turn up. You can you can cue up the Don Meredith because the party's over early. Yes, correct. Cue up the Don Meredith and put the champagne on ice because we're getting ready to celebrate New Year's. Yeah. Yep. And then that's good. Yeah. And then you're going to be a week away. You know, we'll be yes. talking next Thursday about previewing those two teams. So, again, the game is tied at 32 with 337 left. Oklahoma has 502 yards total offense. The Seminoles have 527 yards total offense. So that's 1,000 yards combined yeah. between the two teams in this game. Uh, yesterday was a game that went short over time. Yeah. Well, the well, Washington that one. There's still one more game this evening. Washington and Texas is on mm. tonight. That's the next game on ESPN. Um, surprised that Gerald's not still trying. I know he's not feeling very well, but surprised he's right. not staying up. I know he was excited about the Cowboy Titans game that's on uh, Amazon right now, but I was wondering yeah. if he was going to try to stay up and watch the Texas game. Washington's going to put give them a little bit of a fight. Um mm-hmm. Do you see them upsetting Texas? Do you think What's that the line in that upset if, if Washington wins? I think Washington's the better team. Because right now, Texas is a three point favorite. The over under is 66 in a hook. So that's good. That they, they're, so the gamblers are getting, again, betting a lot, a lot of points. Again, when you have a packed, what, Pac 12 offense that scores a lot of points, those offenses score a lot of points out in the Pac 12. Mm-hmm. Against the against the Big Twelve, that can also score a lot of points. They they're known to score a lot of points too. So, I'm just curious on how. Well, I I think Washington's the better football team too. So I guess it'll depend on again who wins the turnover battle, who scores points when they have the football. You know, well, you know. Oh, what a not, catch! We're not breaking any new new football uh, ground here. We're no. we're not we're not we're not gonna. Elevate your football knowledge. It's kind of it's it's the same thing that football's been for the last hundred years. Yeah, score right. keep the other guys from scoring. 
Don't make don't don't turn the ball over. Get turnovers. Don't do anything stupid. No, I mean, no it's 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 a formula for success. I mean, it's you know it's it's nothing profound and out you know. One one stat that I did see that was a little bit interesting is is the luck luckometer, I guess, if you will, is that uh, favors Michigan over the other three teams in the um, yeah. in the, in the final four. Right. Um, right. 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 They get the more they get more lucky bounces. However, that's I don't really I really didn't understand how that was ter- determined. Um. But again, like it's on paper, you know, on paper, Michigan's a seven point favorite. So, I mean, you know, um, on Saturday night, I may be very apoplectic. <laughs> I'm going to be at a New Year's yeah, party, so I'm going to be make sure my phone's fully charged and I'll keep paying attention to my uh, to my phone. I don't I have a party that I'm going to in Tampa, but I'm not going to be. Hmm. See, I guess the plan is we're not staying till midnight because my friend A has a dog that huh. has separation anxiety. Cute dog. I, I think I showed the picture to you and Gerald off air. Um, I was babysitting her earlier in the month, but she doesn't want to leave her by herself, and she's afraid of loud noises. What happens on New Year's? Fireworks. Yeah. So right. I leave the dog alone and get scared. So, and I don't want to be, I don't want to be driving on the road with the crazy ass drunks. They get on the road after midnight and right. stuff like that. So, um, right I'll be, I, I mean, if the game kicks off at 8, I might be able to catch. I know I'll be able to listen to it on the radio on the way home, but I might be able to catch some of it. If, say, it's a close game, say they go to overtime, I might be able to see the overtime. But, again, I don't, at the end of the day, I don't have yeah. any cheering interest. And that's a good thing because, again, that's what Make made it right. – Interesting when I went to the Cure Bowl a couple weeks ago, not having a cheer, a cheer interest, mm, a so rooting easier, interest, easier to cover a game, easier to write about a game when you don't have the cheer interest. When you don't have a, you know, I know we're getting, I know we're going to see UTSA in the American. They're they're one, I think they're oh, yeah. one of the four teams that are coming over um, next season, so we're going to see them uh, more often, but. Um, they're a neat little football program. They've done they've done yeah. amazing things with their little football program there. And and you know what? I'll be honest with you. They they you know they're they're you know they call themselves the heart of San Antonio. Mm-hmm. Um, I've never been to Texas, San Antonio, Texas myself, but um, mm-hmm. you know they 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 call you themselves the heart of San Antonio. So they uh, their band is out. <laughs> I got to sit behind their band, so their band's pretty damn good. Um, pretty damn good. I mean, they're known for their band, and so is, uh, I guess, Troy. Troy's from Alabama. But, I mean, it would be, again, you know, I'm not going to hate if the SEC wins another national championship, but I, I think this might be the year that the SEC gets knocked off its perch. Um, mm-hmm. I think that Michigan – It'd be it'd be nice to humble it'd be nice to humble the SEC a little bit. Yeah, no, we we need I, you know again you know we're egotistical. <laughs> I'm gonna. Miss Y'all that. earned it. As an SEC guy, we we can get egotistical, you know. Um, but yeah, I think sometimes every every once in a while, you got to be humble. You know, you you gotta you, you gotta do. be humble. So, I I can. Would I be surprised if yeah. Michigan wins it all? No. I won't be. I, I, honestly, I will not be. Um, I just want to so win it out, right? That's just me. Yeah. I mean, nine times out of ten, if Georgia wins, I'll probably be wearing my Georgia hat next week. Just because it's the SEC, and uh, the only okay. hat I don't wear is Tennessee. Um, I don't own any right. SEC team's hat, but I own a, a Georgia hat. Um, but, I mean, yeah, I, I – you know – I, I don't I don't feel that um, I think again it, like we mentioned earlier I think it's going to be close in the first half of both those unless unless TCU and Ohio State create a bunch of turnovers and then it yeah. shakes the college world upside down and somehow both of them win because or, of the turnovers and that would be because Michigan and Georgia beat themselves it's better. wouldn't be TCU and Ohio State beating them. 
it would be them beating themselves by turning the ball over too much. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the other, I think it goes the other way too. If yes. PCU and Ohio State give up a whole bunch of turnovers early, you know, it's it's going to get ugly and it's going to stay ugly. Right. You know, if if Georgia and Michigan both get out to 14, 21 point leads early, you know, halfway through the first quarter, it's just they're just going to keep coming. Yeah. It's just going to be wave after wave after wave. And before by the by the half it'll be twenty eight to seven. And yeah, if, if if it's if, if they're down by, if either one of those teams fall behind by fourteen or more points, I think it's pretty much set in in stone. Unless there's some major injuries and major turnovers. Or you no, know, you know. I think you can get down. I think either one of them could get down early. You know, get down a couple of scores early, get down fourteen nothing. If they can, if they can put together a drive, don't necessarily have to. Get a get a score, but they can put down a put together drive, keep their defense off the field, get the defense a little bit of, of a breather, and you know if you turn around real quick and it's fourteen nothing Michigan and TCU's offense comes out and they put together a little bit of a little bit of a drive, and maybe they go down and get a field goal. So they go down and get a field goal, and you know they start to feel they start to feel a little bit better about themselves. They start to feel a little bit of confidence, and and they can get a stop and they get the ball back and they can make it fourteen ten. You know, with with ten minutes to go in the second quarter, we have got a ball game. But they're gonna have to. They're gonna have to. If they get down twenty one to nothing, they get down twenty four to nothing, or even seventeen to nothing at the half. Oh, I just don't yeah. think that either one of either Ohio State or or TCU are gonna have enough to keep coming. Mm -hmm. And I think it goes. I think it cuts both ways. I think the only one, I mean, Michigan goes down seventeen nothing early, you know, seventeen nothing at the half. It's gonna be a tough road to help. Yeah, I think Georgia's about the only one built to come all the way back from seventeen. You know, then, right. and then, depending on you know, depending on whether who gets the ball to come out of the second half, and, you know, especially if 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 you're looking at Michigan a seventeen nothing lead at the half and the ball out of the court out of the second half, and they could be they could be down twenty, twenty four, twenty five, right away. Yes, and you can put the clamps on them. Put the put the screws and thumbs and just and just beat the living hell because that's what Michigan wants to do. Michigan wants to take the ball, take the air out of the ball. Mm -hmm. Michigan wants to make you just eat every yard. But Michigan doesn't care. Well, you go back and you look at the the Ohio State game. And Michigan didn't care that they had 10, 10 yards on twenty carries. It's what they wanted. Right. Yeah, they weren't gashing them. They, those those. He took Donovan Edwards about a, about a few quarters, about half a game. Once he got confident in his, in his left hand, with the ball in his left hand, and they got a chance to get in the locker room, look at the tape, and and McCarthy had kept him in the game, um, and and Donovan was like, okay, I'm looking, okay, yeah, I'm, I, I can carry the ball in my left hand. I'm not, it's not going to get knocked loose. And that offensive line came out and took over in the second half, and it was all over. It was all, it was all went over. Florida State's getting ready to kick a field goal with 57 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Oh, boy. Here we go. But Ohio State – or excuse me, Ohio State. Oklahoma has no timeouts left. I was going to say, does Oklahoma have any timeouts left? They have no timeouts The problem is, again, there's – well, we're already past a two-minute warning anyway, but there is no timeouts for ball. Um, so, it will come, I guess it will come down to um, – if he misses or makes it, I didn't know that Purdue was the number one team in the country in men's basketball. Yes, they are. I didn't know, I, I didn't know that either. I didn't know that either. I was just I'm watching the little okay. thing at the bottom of the game. I'm like, the ticker, one, yeah. I'm like, what? When did Purdue become yeah. the number one team in the country? Well, good for the Boiler Makers. I did not know that they were the number one team in the country. Um. So, guys, I don't know if you saw. I did. I did write. I did write uh, yeah, my sure. first. He, good um i did write my first college hockey article um Ooh. i have not read ralph, it huh? ralph told me that it was good i i tried to again my goal with the whole thing is to be at the frozen four in april um yeah it's here in tampa and it's the arena um and that's the only press box here locally that i haven't been in so 
Uh, no, he's been he's been in every other press box around the world, but the only one he hasn't been yeah. locally. <laughs> Just look, yeah. Well, no, I mean, trust me, there there are some that I, you know. Obviously, I would I would like to go to the big house is one of them. I mean, oh, yeah. even I mean, I was in the one in Gainesville. I would love to be in Tallahassee, or I mean, uh, not this year, not this upcoming year, twenty twenty four. 2024, I think, the USF plays Florida and Miami back-to-back weeks on the road. So I'm ho- kind of hoping maybe, maybe I could go to Gainesville one Saturday and then head to Coral Gables the following Saturday and have two games, you know. That would be kind of cool to go back-to-back like that. So, But um, I, I guess I, I have to focus more on the games within those conferences. I had to write about, I think there was like four or five of them. And, but the problem that were the, not the, I should say a problem. The thing that the, the issue that I ran into is a lot of the, like the other, the, the last two that I wrote about have similar teams. So I wrote about the big 10. That was one of the conferences I covered. Um, and I believe the number one team right now in the big 10, I think is Penn state. Yeah, they have a really good hockey program. I think Penn State's the number one team in the Big Ten right now, or Wisconsin. I can't remember which. They have a good hockey team too. Which which ones are there? Ohio State's down near the midway. Michigan is right there at the top two. Yeah, they're a top five team. No, um, top five team in the country. But yeah, it, it was. It's um. It. I mean. It, I, it's out of my comfort zone, right? And I had a lot of people love tell me that, read the article, that read the article. They're like, hey, you know, good job. We've been your comfort zone. Because my comfort zone is NFL, college, football, uh, golf, yeah. obviously. Um, and I'll throw baseball, in a baseball article in there, and I'm going to try to get credentials for the Rays uh, this upcoming year, too. So I got to get finish up college hockey in April. I get credentials to the Frozen Four, and then flip it in like May, March, and May. Flip it to baseball to get ready for the baseball season in April, so that I have yeah. some writing about the Rays. Um, Ralph said that they we got credentials to the Astros. Well, the Astros are a lot more popular than the Rays are. <laughs> no exactly. offense. They're also a bit of a drive. Yeah, yeah. They they are the defending World Series champions for right now. now. So I mean, and they and they and they've been, they've been a you know, the Astros. I mean, I think that it was big for them to win the World Series this year, kind of put that whole okay, 2019 scandal in the rearview mirror and go, hey, see, we can win the right way. See, we can win the right way, and we did it this year. Yeah, uh, there there are certain fans out there. No matter oh, no, no matter yeah. how, no matter no matter. What no matter what you do, they're wearing pinstripes and they'll 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 bring up twenty nineteen at every opportunity. No, 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 uh, present company not included. Um, um, you know, tw- the COVID kind of screwed us on revenge. You know. Yes, if anybody anybody got lucky that we had COVID, it was Houston. That, that that's it. Anybody got lucky that we had a, a, a pandemic that did not allow fans to come to oh, stadium. God, it was them. It was the Astros. Yes. So now Oklahoma's going backwards. They have 20 seconds left. And, we had and they are, I believe, on their side of the 50. And they're doing the Tomahawk shop in Orlando right now. Wow. It is in, the game is in the old orange bowl mm. you're gonna throw a screen yeah 14 seconds left and you're not even near midfield wow that's interesting i didn't know too uh venables the former defensive coordinator for the uh clemson tigers is the head coach for oklahoma i did not know i didn't know he got the job in oklahoma yeah last year when he took over for uh Zach. well that's gonna so. be the ball game right there yeah, I think that's the ball game right there. That's the one thing you can't do with no timeouts. Nope, ball game. They didn't get the snap off. Yep, Florida State won by a field goal. 
Wow. What a game. That was a really good game. Yeah. yeah. And I think Florida State was heavily favored, too. Because if they come into the game, mm-hmm. Oklahoma was 6-6. Six and six. They just got into the bowl game. Yeah. Oklahoma, well, I didn't expect big things from Oklahoma anyway. Dylan Gabriel used to be the quarterback for UCF. He was a trainer. Mm. No. It's good for the Seminoles. That's 10 wins sure. for Coach Norvell and the, and the Noles. He needed it. He needed it. He needed it. He needed it. Yeah, had he not, Dion would be there right now. <laughs> well, I, well I, no doubt in I don't my know. mind if that job was available. I don't know. I don't know if Dion would have been there, but he would certainly have certainly as hell wouldn't have been. Yeah, no, yeah. Norvell would have been Norvell would have been gone. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who would have been the coach, but I can tell you who wouldn't have been the coach. Mike Norvell. Yeah, that's right. That is right. <laughs> um yeah. No, you know, and then you know, to just kind of uh, put the uh, put a bow on it. Um, um, you know, I, I kind of uh, maybe not to put a bow on it, but to to to, uh, to go back to what we've been talking about. You know, in 2019, Michigan got their ass kicked by Ohio State at home in the big house, 63-32, and it wasn't even close. It was ugly, and it was ugly early. And there was a lot of soul searching in Ann Arbor, and we've lost Brad. Did he fall down? Mm-hmm. That, that was wasn't that at the time too, but that they wanted to run Harbaugh out of town too. Well, that was that was well, it was it was the culmination of everything, right? So they, you know, it was it was it was it was a watershed moment for the program, right? Right. Uh, Michigan had been, you know, hadn't been, hadn't had any success. Lightning. <laughs> yeah, that's where you went. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's that falling down. Back when I had season tickets to the Lightning, back in mm. 2008. There you go. <laughs> back when they, back when they were a bad team. Yeah, they were. Yeah, they were bad. <laughs> was that was, was the most Stanley, uh, Stanley Cup team? Yeah. 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 Um, but but no. So so in, in you know they bring him in 2015. You know loses to Ohio State. 2016, the most most disgusting, embarrassing. Heartbreaking, gut wrenching loss. 2017, get blown out. 2018, get blown out. 2019, get blown out yet again. And 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 not only did they get blown out again, but they got blown out by the new guy. And the narrative in Ann Arbor and around in around the country was is Harbaugh didn't have it. He didn't have that and couldn't get it done at Stanford. Couldn't win the big one at Stanford. Couldn't win the big one at, at in in and in, in San Francisco. And and he can't it can't be can't beat Michigan State can't beat Penn State can't beat Ohio State he can't beat the states so as long as he's not playing a state he'll be all right can't beat Iowa and he goes into Ames and loses loses bat you know loses a a a, a pits poorly played game it, it gets out coached and you go go into the COVID year right and everything is all up in the air don't know whether we're playing you know playing okay we're gonna play six games we're gonna play all conference games three on the road three at home no fans. And um, when we go out and we win the first game and look really good, we blow, blow the doors off of um, Minnesota, a, a, a very talented Minnesota team, a team that was expected to win the West in 2020. And, and you know, we, we got a quarterback. We, Joe, Milton, Joe Milton came out, and, you know, performed very, very well, looked very, very good. And then Aiden Hutchinson gets hurt, and the wheels come off. And... It was, you know, it finished two and four, and all the talking heads, all the media personnel were like, get rid of Harbaugh. He can't get it done. He's had too many opportunities. Ducked Ohio State, and then they, they ducked Ohio State. They got COVID two weeks before Ohio State. And, you know, in his press conference, the preseason press conference, you know, he said, die, win or die trying. And and that was the moment that that, that that everything changed in Ann Arbor. And they went back. To the, they went back. To, sorry, I'm getting feedback, so it's throwing me off. When when he was when he made that statement, and they went out and they just worked. They didn't talk. They they didn't talk smack. They didn't they didn't trash talk. They just they just put work in. All off season, all off season, they put in work. And. You know, we, we get to 2020, win seven straight games, finally beat 
Wisconsin in Wisconsin, you know, and and then we we blow it to Michigan State, and it's all here we go again, right? And you know, we're playing Ohio State in Ann Arbor, haven't beat them in eight years, yeah. ducked them last year, right? That was the end. That was the narrative in in Columbus. We were scared. We didn't want to play them. Haven't beat. We couldn't beat Urban Meyer. Couldn't beat Trim Tressel. Haven't beat Ryan Day, and um, we score. We, we get an early score, and then we throw a pick, throw a bad pick, and it just felt like here we go again. But they bowed up. Defense made some tremendous, tremendous plays. We beat Ohio State. We beat we beat Ohio State, and not only did we beat them, but we beat them soundly. Beat them yes. soundly, and then. We beat the brakes off of Iowa. Beat the brakes off of Iowa. Just never let them have a sniff. And and then go and lay an egg against Georgia. Look bad against Georgia. An and it was it was it was here we go again, you know? It can't win a big one. Can't win a big one. There's what are tie, they gonna there's do? A tie hockey game. There's a tie hockey game, Lou. Mm-hmm. That goal's not gonna get called back. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what, what are they going to do? Going to have to replace a job. Going to have to replace Hutchinson. Going to have to replace, um, the offensive coordinator, the defensive coordinator. We have a quarterback controversy. Is it Cade or is it JJ? You're going to start both quarterbacks. One's going to play one half. The other's going to play the other half. And get the quarterback positions figured out. Beat beat Penn State. Beat Michigan State. Beat Iowa in Ames. Or Iowa City. It's Iowa City. Um, Iowa City. Yeah, so Ames is, uh, is uh, Iowa State. Right. I always get that backwards. Um, and 11-0. and 0. And everything that Ohio State has been saying for a year was a fluke. It was a one-off. You know, yeah. Mm-hmm. They're they're ready. They're not going to get bullied. Mm-hmm. And they're going to play their game, and Michigan beat them at their game. Michigan threw the deep ball. Michigan took the top off. Mm-hmm. Michigan had a sixty-nine yard, a seventy-five yard, a forty-five yard passing touchdowns, and and, and the the two touchdowns that the two long rushing touchdowns were academic at that at that point. Right. Ohio State just, just didn't have it. And then, you know, and, and then they go and they beat Purdue, win the Big Ten, back-to-back Big Ten titles. And and now now the focus is TCU. Yeah. And, and I was going to say, but real quick, the, you're just talking about Harbaugh's talk. I could think back uh, to when um, <laughs> yeah. Florida lost to Ole Miss. Tebow came out and said, Hey, we, I won't, you know, we'll be the, the best program for the rest of the season. And then they went on to win the national championship that year. So it reminded me a lot of that speech. And mm-hmm. sometimes, again, I think not so much in, in, in sports, but in life too. I think every once in a while, sometimes you need to kick in the ass or, or a beat down to wake up. Mm-hmm. Because, you know what? We got We got to fix things. I got to fix things. We got to change some things. And I think, Harbaugh and and the Wolverines have done just that. They've said, okay, you know what? Yeah, Ohio State, Michigan State, Penn State had our number. Guess what? No more. We know how to beat them. We're going to figure out how to beat them. We've beat them over the last you know couple seasons. So guess what? We've turned the turned the page. And you know, again, they're gonna they're probably going to meet Georgia in a couple weeks. And I know, and I I can, I'm sure every Michigan Wolverine fan. Once to revenge the game from last year, Michigan was outplayed. I mean, I watched the game and I was watching it, but thinking about you, honestly, because I know how big of a Wolverine fan you were. And I think I may even have texted you during the game. Yeah. And I said, what's going on? Because I didn't expect Georgia to just, just pummel them. They just got pummeled. But then again, like you said, in the oh, second man. half, Michigan came back, but it was too little too late. It was – they were too far behind to catch up. Um, I don't see that happening this time around. Michigan is way better of a football team than they were a year ago. 
Georgia is also a better football team, if, 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 if there's a way to say that. But Georgia is also a better team than they were a year ago. So it's going to be interesting to see yeah. – how the game is played out, but I, you know, I agree with that. I think, you know, everybody, oh, let's get rid of him. Oh, you know, you need to run him out of town. Well, he's obviously proved everybody wrong in Ann Arbor. And, oh, okay, well, we're on the verge of being – One more step. We're two wins away from being a national champion. You know, yes. when we were two wins, they were two wins away last year as well from winning a national championship. The lights were too bright last year. Yeah. In my opinion, the so, lights were too bright. They were too just. They were just too yeah. happy to be there. Do you think that Bud maybe? It, I I know they always say like if a young team um, gets to the Stanley Cup Finals or a young team gets to the World Series or a young team gets to the Super Bowl, it's the playoff experience thing. Like if mm -hmm. a team that has more playoff experience. For example, like the Lightning were that way for a long time. Like we weren't in the playoffs for so many years. Then all of a sudden we were in the playoffs every year, but we weren't getting past a certain round. And, you know, we went back to back Stanley Cups. What I'm saying. Yeah. You're right. about, think, it's the maturation process. I think in a way last year, I think the stage was too big for them. Like, oh, hey, we made it to the college football playoff. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we knocked off Ohio State. We took them out. They're not they, – Ohio State. They're not here. They were. They didn't play in the. They didn't play in the playoff last year, did they? No, they were in. Anna, they were in Pasadena. Yeah, against Alabama, right? Oh no, they were in the Rose Bowl against Utah. Yep. My apologies. Right. Yep. So, right. I, I I I agree with you. I think Good maybe ball. last year they they had that. They were too young. Didn't have that experience. Right. Mm -hmm. They were. They were. The, 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 the bright happened, lights were just too bright. And I think what happened is. After getting beat down like they did a year ago, I don't think the lights are too bright for them now. I think they're going to handle business Saturday afternoon, and then the evening game will be the Georgia game. But I think they'll handle yeah. TCU. Um, I, I I agree with Lou. I think the game might be a little bit closer than a lot of people are making it out to be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's still going to be Michigan and Georgia. I, I don't see any – I mean, again, right. unless an injury, a major injury to one of the major defensive or offensive players that, you know, change the dynamic of the offense or defense, or they turn the ball over seven times. You know, it's going to take – it's going to take more than two turnovers to get Georgia and Michigan off of their game. It's that – it's going to take more than two. If they get, like, four or five turnovers, then you shot yourself in their own damn foot, and, and you deserve to lose the football game. I don't That's see right. that happening. They're, they're too mature. Both teams are too yeah. mature. Teams have two mature head coaches in Kirby Smart and Jim Harbaugh. And, again, I'm not dissing on Sonny Dykes, and I'm not dissing on Ryan Day by any means. Well, I am dissing on Ryan Day. So Day, Ryan Day yeah. has the experience. Ryan Day is a putt. He doesn't handle pressure very well. Sonny Ryan Dykes, Day is a putt. No, we don't know how Sonny Dykes yeah, seems I, to handle pressure well, but now against a good team like Michigan, I don't know. We'll I, I, I think I think if you look at if you look at what the Big Twelve has done in the bowl season, and you look at the teams that TCU has beaten and the teams that have lost, the Big Twelve teams that they had to come back on, and those teams have all lost their bowl games. Right. So I, I think that the, I think that the level of competition in the Big Twelve isn't as impressive as the SEC and the Big Ten. And I, and I think I think the problem is is that the Big Ten and the SEC beat up on each other, right? Yeah. Because there, there's just I think I think that if you look at it, I think that the, the middling teams of the Big Ten and the and the SEC are better than the middling teams of the Big Twelve. Right. You know the Razorbacks. Obviously, they beat Kansas yesterday in in an in, 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 in instant classic. ESPN instant classic. Yeah, because they because they had the they had hands on the ropes. They let them come all the way back, and then they beat them in the end. And mm -hmm. then, yeah, Arkansas came out on top. So, but Arkansas is one of those mid 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 track teams mm -hmm. too. They're mm -hmm. not. I mean, could they be? An SEC West champion in the future, sure. 
I don't know what they're going to do when Oklahoma and Texas get here in 2024. They probably Correct. won't have any more divisions. It probably won't be like that anymore because there'll be too yeah. many teams to have to figure out, oh, who's going to play who and this and that. But and geography, too. That's yeah, up to the schedulers. You know, that's up to the schedulers how that's going to play out. Right. You know? um, but, yeah, I agree that – well, what? Let, let me ask you this. Where do you think that TCU would be if they were in the Big Ten or SEC? Where do you Middle. think that they would be at? Middle of the pack, near the bottom. Where do you think that top of the middle? Top of the middle. Top of the middle. Like Like six or seven. Like an Iowa, Illinois type. Okay. Yeah, I think so. So I don't think I. You know, we don't know because they. You know, they didn't play the best teams in the Big Ten. They played the best teams in the Big Twelve. Right. And, And the best teams in the Big Twelve all got beat. Yeah. Wisconsin beat um who the who the hell did they beat? Oklahoma State. Oklahoma, Air Force beat Bam. Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State. Yeah. Oklahoma got beat by Florida State. Baylor got beat by the Air yep. Force. Wisconsin beat. Oh wow! The Air Force Air Force won. Good for them. Thirty to twelve. Thirty to twelve. Yep. Yeah. The they one that won the thirty. Be this year, so they won. Yeah. They they were the team that won. So. Uh, didn't go to Army or Navy. <laughs> <Went to Yeah. laughs> um, and so, you know, and, and that's the thing. You know, I, I, I see them as a – I think they beat Michigan State. I don't know they beat Iowa. I don't know if they beat Wisconsin. Minnesota. I don't think they beat Illinois. I don't think they beat Kentucky. I don't think they beat Arizona. Not Arizona, sorry. Um, Arkansas. I think they're, you know, if, they, if you stack them against the best, against the, the 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 other two conferences that are in the playoff, in the Big Ten and the and the, and the SEC, I think they're middle of the road. Really, I do. And I think USC yeah. is better. I think Alabama is better. I think Penn State's probably better. I think Utah's better. I I I honestly, I think, I think Utah. I think a lot of people underestimate that Utah team. I mm-hmm. I. Picked them, you know, to win the Pac-12, and obviously they they showed that they were able to do that. But I right. mean, they're going to be in the Rose Bowl against who are they playing against? Penn State. Against? Penn State. Um, no. that should be a good football game. I, I, I well, it's like somebody. Top. Yeah. Well, just to show you how good the Big Ten has been this last year, is that the Pac-12 sent their best team to the Rose Bowl. The Big Ten sent their third best team to the Rose Bowl. Hey, Rich, how you doing? I was, I'm guessing this is going to be Rich because he's talking about the Knowles. This game is still tied with seven minutes left in the third period. Okay. Um. But yeah, I mean, um, yes, congratulations to the Knowles on their win um, this evening. Against Correct golf cart. <laughs> against Oklahoma. I'm thinking about going to play around tomorrow. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'd have to. Well, let's. Well, I don't even. I don't even know what the records are for the Big Twelve, the SEC, and the Big Ten in the bowl games. I know. I know yeah, the Gators big- lost to Oklahoma to Oklahoma, to Oregon State. They got killed. We did, yeah, score, we, we did but, keep our you know, one. We did keep our point streak alive, though. I don't think we've been shut out in like two hundred and eighty something games. The Gators have wow. Yeah. So um, I'll just jinx that so, now. They'll get oh, shut out next year in the game one of the season. Uh, but anyway, uh, they so um, like Buster Cook or something like that. Yeah, they they. Um, I'm not sure what the records are for every. And I'm not. I'm not sure, but. I know the I know the big I know the Big Twelve is zero and four. I think the SEC is like three and three. Okay. Right. Let's see here. Okay, here we go. So we got the Mountain West is three and three. Okay. In their bowl games, the Pac twelve is two and one. In their bowl games. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay, 
Now I've just put them back in alphabetical order. Yeah. Okay. The American is three and three at five hundred. The ACC is four and two. The Big Twelve is one and four. The Big Ten oh. is two and up. Conference USC is three and three. The Independents are two and two. The MAC is three and two. The Mountain West is two, three and three. Sorry about that. Three and three. The Pac-12 is two and one. The SEC is one and three, and the Sun Belt is three and four. Mm. The American what? teams that have won their bowl games are Cincinnati, Cincinnati, SMU, and Houston, and okay. Memphis. So that's four. How are they three and three? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, no, I'm sorry. Cincinnati lost to Louisville 24 to 7. SMU beat BYU. No, they lost to BYU. Houston beat Louisiana. Memphis beat Utah State. Eastern Carolina beat Coastal Carolina. And US, UCF lost to Duke. The only game Ooh. they have left is the Cotton Bowl. Tulane against USC. That should be a good football game. Tulane's a good, a decent American team. Yes. They had a good season this year. The ACC is as follows. Louisville beat Cincinnati. Wake Forest beat Missouri. Duke beat UCF. <clears throat> North Carolina beat oh, – no, I'm sorry. Oregon beat North Carolina Wake last Forest. night. I watched that game. Minnesota beat Syracuse. Florida State beat Oklahoma. They've got three games left. NC State versus Maryland in the Mayo Bowl. Tomorrow at noon, Pitt versus UCLA tomorrow at 2. Clemson against Tennessee tomorrow at 8. So they have some That's going to be a good ball game. Clemson and Tennessee tomorrow. That's going to be a hell of a ball game. Um, the Big 12, the only win so far for the Big 12 is um, Texas Tech beating Ole Miss. 42-25, and I guess – if correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't there some kind of controversy or something? I think Lane yeah. Kiffin said some athlete spit on him, racial mm. slur. Or, I don't know. I was trying to read the article today about that. Yeah, I was trying to read the article, something like that. And then the the Big Ten so far are two and zero. Oh. They Wisconsin beat Oklahoma State, Minnesota beat Syracuse. So their games left is. They Maryland and NC State are both Big Ten teams, so they're facing against. No, they're not. They're not. NC oh, State, an ACC team. That's right. Um, Iowa versus Kentucky. That's on New Year's Eve. That's a noon game. Michigan, TCU, Ohio State, Georgia. So both of those are going to be determined. That Illinois plays Mississippi State here, noon on uh, January second in Tampa, the old Outback Bowl. Purdue versus LSU. Oh, that's going to be a good game, too, on January 2nd in Orlando. It's a Citrus Bowl. Ugly. Penn State versus Utah on January 2nd at 5 o'clock. The Ruse Bowl is there. Okay. And the SEC, the only one they've won so far is Arkansas. Beat Kansas 55-53 in three overtimes. Um so they have South Carolina versus Notre Dame. That's tomorrow at 3.30. That should be a good one. Tennessee, Clemson, we already talked yeah. about. Alabama, Kansas State is on New Year's Eve at noon. Kentucky, Iowa is 12 p.m. also. So both those games are both on at noon on Saturday on the day of the, of the semifinal games as well. Um yeah, I think LSU mm -hmm. Purdue is going to be a good game too, and I, you know, yeah. Illinois, Illinois is going to give Mississippi State some fits. No, Illinois will give Mississippi State a game. Purdue, yeah. is, Purdue ain't got a shot. No, you don't think they got a shot? Not at a game? chance. No. Okay. No, yeah. sorry. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to hard pass on that. <laughs> well, I've seen what per, I've seen okay. what Purdue can do, and it's okay. it's not enough. LSU beat Bama. True. True. Go to Tennessee. <laughs> what do you think about – what do you think well, – switching gears here, what do you think about Nick Saban? How long does he have left? A year. Uh, 
I, you know, that's a good question because they what they lost two games this season. If they lose yes. another two or more next season, he he's got a he's got a very short leash because the problem with that fan base is they're so used to them winning national championships or at least being in the college football playoff. I think this is the first year since the playoff that mm-hmm. Alabama hasn't been in it yeah. at all. You know, yeah. so yeah. I think and that's when they started pitching about getting more teams in. Yeah. Well, and see, that's going to be the thing too. See when they do yeah. make it 12 teams, Alabama will probably be one of the 12. Yeah. Now, of course. Does that mean they're going to be that's in what the they final do. Four or final two? Who knows? No. We don't know. You know, we don't know how, how that's going to go down. I, I think if, if they have another two or three loss season, Next year or the years to come, I think they might be looking for a new head coach. But he always seems just well, like every other there, you know. like all reload. So I wouldn't. No, be I think I. I meant in terms of years. He's seventy-four, I believe. I would say wow. maybe another five, six. Turns eighty, maybe. If he's still able to go and recruit and all that stuff. Maybe not. Okay, it's so it's gonna be a weird. It's going to be a weird day in college football when Nick Saban retires, yeah, or, or gets fired. That'll be that'll be. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. way, see, if, if Nick Saban, is, yeah. what happens if he does get fired? Who replaces him? If Nick Saban gets fired, that'll be a day you'll tell your kids about. Yeah. Well, you that'll be a day where you were. You remember where you were on that day? That's yeah, day. you remember that day? A cool event like nine eleven. Yeah. And the pandemic, you'll always know where you were the day that Nick Saban got fired from Alabama. <laughs> yes. Yeah. If you're a college fan, if you're a sports fan. Now, if you don't give a rat's As ass well, about I sports, then that, you know, you know, me, but yeah. That'll, that'll be a day that you'll remember. It's the day that Nick Saban got fired. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I, I but I, I mean, I guess fired. it depends. He doesn't have any health issues. I could see another so he coach so he's 80, maybe less. Maybe he Two or three years from now, he goes. You know what? I'm yeah, done. I think he's pushing it. Do you think? Do you think if he has another ten, if he has another two or three lots, if he has a couple more, let's say, let's say they go and win it all next year. So they were fifteen and zero next year, right? Mm-hmm. You think yeah. he calls it quits? Do you think he hangs it up? He's got eight titles. He's got more than anybody. Well, knowing him and his e- and his ego, no, I don't think that's enough. Yeah, I, I honestly, to more me, do you want. 10. He'll want a double. He'll want double digits. Uh, Just so that he can say that he won won a double digit national championship. Because he he didn't win one at Michigan State, right? They didn't win one when he was there, or did they? Yes, they did. 2000. And he won won Uh, one with LSU, right? Yes. He had LSU in the national championship as well. Right. So he's won two out. And then how many did he win in Alabama? He's won. Six. six or seven? Six or seven. seven. I don't remember offhand. So okay. he has nine right now. Yeah. If he has nine right now, there's he may not have been he may not have been he may not have been the head coach in two thousand when Michigan State won at all. Right. But I'm pretty sure he's on staff. Back when he when he left to go to LSU. I mean he lost Michigan State to go to LSU. And when he got on that press conference, he's like, "I'm not going anywhere. These are my boys. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going anywhere." Next thing you know, he's down in Baton Rouge. Yeah, and he wins a national title in in, in Baton Rouge. These are my boys. I ain't going anywhere. I love these kids. These are my boys. Next thing you know, he's in Miami. Yeah. Yep. And he gets his dumbass fired in Miami. And then he goes to Tuscaloosa and turns that team around. So Bama was a middling team at that point. They were seven and five in two thousand six. Yeah, I was gonna say he he didn't inherit the greatest uh, team in Alabama. Yeah. When he got to Tuscaloosa, um, let me see here. I didn't I didn't know until I watched that documentary about Bill Belichick that he was the defensive coordinator in Cleveland when mm-hmm. Belichick was the coach. Um, let's see here. 
He has won seven national championships. Okay, he, so won he, wasn't in, the he won in 2003, 09, 11, 12, 15, 17, and 20. So he has seven national championships. So I think I don't think he won one, but in Michigan State. He must not have. I think the 03 championship was with the LSU with the Tigers, right? Yeah. Okay. And then he's won the rest of them. So he's got seven. So he has – he'd have to win. So he would have eight if they win next year. If they say, yeah. Ohio, say Alabama runs the table and they go next year, he'd have eight. He might hang it up. He might say, you know what, what else do I – I mean, what else do you have left to do? You've won eight. You've won seven with, with Bama. You've won one in LSU. So, basically, all your national championships have come to the SEC. So, why would you want to – Ah, who knows? I, and I could be totally wrong. He may say, you know what, I'm done. I win one more and I'm done. Always and I'm going to turn the team over to somebody who I know yeah. can lead Alabama into the future. Now, like him, I don't know. I don't know if when he – it's hard when a head coach like him leaves a program and the next person takes over. It's like, okay, well, we're going to go 50 to no, right? We're going to go 50 to no, right? No. It doesn't work right. like that. Sometimes well, it's, it's, it's Urban Meyer. Yeah, correct. Well, well, Urban Meyer. To, to Ryan Day, you know, so that didn't work out, you know, all that well either. Well, when Ryan, when, when Urban Meyer left of Florida State or Florida, they they ran that program into the ground. Yeah, he did. Yeah, that's why we don't like him too much. <laughs> well, I've never liked to stop bitching my, myself. We uh we don't we don't take too kindly to you know he left here because he had health issues. Heart I think problem. what he what he did is he left here because he saw the writing on the wall when you no, lose there's... guys like Bo and. You know, Justin then, Jefferson, guys like that that are all in the NFL now. The power you know, Steve-O. But he didn't want to go out and recruit and have to deal with down seasons. He didn't want to have to deal with, you know, Not uh, you know, a seven and five season or eight and four season. No. You know, he didn't want to have to deal there with was, that. So he left. You know, there was a tremendous amount of smoke around that program, too. Yeah. Well, yeah, because you had Aaron Hernandez, mm -hmm. you know, that was one of the biggest problems. Uh, James Winston? Yeah. No, Cam Newton. Sorry, it's Cam Newton. Cam Newton, yep. Newton yeah. was part of that. And then he left the program and went to Auburn and won a national championship under a gospel mm -hmm. So, yeah. but I mean, um, yeah, it's, it's. You know, there was a lot of stank on Urban Meyer when he left Florida. Yeah. And. Um, Jim Trestle gets fired, and he gets the Ohio State job, and well, the rest is my miserable history. <laughs> Trestle got fired over what a tattoo thing? Is that what happened? It was, yeah, there was the illegal payments being made. Stuff that would have been all stuff that's now legal was at the time NIL. illegal. Is yeah, and the nil and, nil thing. Yeah, yeah, stuff like the stuff that they were doing back then. Which was illegal at the time is now would have been is now legal and would have had no no repercussions. Yeah. Um. First thing I, I'm not. I'm annoyed with the NIL because I thought the NIL was going to be great for the players, right? We all thought, I thought it was a way. I thought it was a way for players to make money, um, on the side, so they didn't have to worry about getting in trouble for selling autographs. Mm -hmm. Or or getting cars or having somebody you know having a booster by their mama pa house, right? And, and and now it's and now it's big business through the school. Yeah, it's big business through the school. It's really irritating. Well, it wasn't it wasn't it the whole thing that the the uh, NCAA didn't want to pay their athletes. Now they let them do it, and now the NCAA is still making money. They're still yeah. yeah money. Well, and the, for me. Like the idea was that so the schools wouldn't have to pay, right? Because I understand, I understand having a hundred and twelve athletes and having to pay all that money would get very expensive very fast. I get that, so I wasn't opposed to the NCAA not paying players. But I was like, you know, if Tom DeLong Ford 
wanted to pay um, the offensive linemen, give them a truck. I was cool with it. That's what I thought the NIL was going to do. And now I'm hearing, now I'm hearing about how this school or that school can't, you know, some players left. I forget who it was. I think it was the, I think it was uh, Drake um, May at NC. He was offered $5 million to transfer. And like, that's not what the end, that's not what I wanted the NIL to be. I wanted the NIL to be so that kids wouldn't get in trouble for playing a game around a golf and hitting a hole in one and not being able to accept the check because that would be a payment. Right. Right. I wanted the NIL to be able, you know, so that the, the offensive lineman, the third string offensive lineman, who's not, who's, who's only going to see the field on, on either a really good day or a really bad day. Mm -hmm. It can go and go sign a couple autographs and eat his meals for free. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the whole thing. I think the biggest thing, bud, with that is they, I agree with you on that. I think it gave the opportunity for the kids. And like you said, maybe your third string kids to get autographs signed and bam. Hey, now my, now I don't have to pay for my food for the whole year. Or I don't have to pay for my food for two years. Someone else is going to pick up my meal for me. And not have to worry about getting so, in trouble and, and not having to, you know, it's all right. above board. It's all above the table. You know, no more, no more Reggie Bush where his, his mom and dad get a, you know, a booster buys his parents a $300,000 house. Yeah. And, and well, that was illegal. It was an illegal yeah. contribution. Can't, can't do that. And, and for me, I was like, you know, Reggie Bush wasn't, it wasn't, Reggie Bush wasn't going to sign with Central Michigan. You know, yeah, you're you know, it wasn't. See, for me, see, I remember 15 years ago. Did you have something to say, Lee? No, sorry, he's breaking up for me, so I'm not. You were saying 15 years ago, yeah, yeah 15 years ago. When yeah, that would have I would have been fifteen too. Um, when the when they first instituted the the one the um sitting out a year, I thought it was going to be good for college football yeah. because I thought it was going to it was going to it was going to make um you know players have to stay at the good players who weren't maybe academically eligible to go to a Michigan or a Notre Dame or you know an Alabama or a Georgia or a USC yeah. or a UCLA. You know, they were going to have to stay at Marshall or Central Michigan or, you know, Northern Illinois. And it was going to bring, it was going to help to raise the bottom up. Well, the NCAA just said, well, we'll just give you a waiver. Now you want to, you can have a waiver. You can have a waiver. You can have a waiver. And it really didn't do anything to help raise the bottom teams up. Right. And, and now it's a joke. Yeah. It has become a joke, hasn't it? And you must just go back to the way it was where you could just, and the other thing that, it, that irritates me about it is that these coaches, you know, you sign with a with a team like let's say you sign with Oregon, you know, your your letter of intent, right. you sign with Oregon. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna play for Willie Tiger. I really like him. I think he's a great guy. Well, Willie Tiger, Willie Tiger left, or not not uh, Florida State. When you right. sign with Florida State, you sign your letter of intent with Florida State. I'm gonna go play for Florida State. I'm gonna play for Willie Tiger. It's gonna be great. Well, Willie Tiger, two weeks later, Willie Tiger's gone. He's he's at Oregon. Well, you've already signed your letter of intent, or you've been at Florida State. Or let's say, let's say in 2017, 16, you signed to Florida State because you wanted to play for Willie Taggart. Well, Willie Taggart jumps ships and goes to Oregon in 2017. Well, if you if you want to transfer anywhere else, you got to sit out a year now, or or beg the NCAA for permission. You go ask. You got to go ask mom if you can have permission to go play somewhere else. Right. Yeah, it's, it's funny how coaches can jump ship and go wherever they please, but then with the transfer portal allows college players to be eligible immediately. Right. Um, I and, like the transfer portal. Yeah, I mean, some people love the transfer portal. Some people don't like the transfer portal. It just, just depends on well, – because they you – know, then again, see, I, I like it because if you're a player and I'm going to use Deion Sanders for an yeah, example – you are now at Jackson State, right? And I know that's an HBSC school. 
Now you can transfer, and if you want to go to follow him to Colorado, and they can give you a scholarship or whatever, you can yes. now follow him to Colorado if that's where you feel comfortable. Or, like you said with Willie Taggart, I don't want to play for Willie Taggart. Now I can, I can transfer to Florida State now, and play for Mike Norvell. Or right. Mike Mike Norvell, I want to transfer to Florida, play for Billy Napier. That's where I think it, it benefits mm-hmm. the players. It gives them an opportunity to be eligible right away for play. Mm-hmm. But uh, the I, I I agree with you. I think the NIL was supposed to help players, but I think it's it's big it, business now. It's, yeah, well, that's what it is. It, it comes. I I watched a clip on Real Sports with Brian Gumble. I have needed to catch up on episodes. I love that that show on HBO, but um. It yeah. comes down to um, what I one of them was there was a lawyer in Miami and he decided that he wanted to help the University of Miami, his alma mater, as most boosters will do. Uh, that's what boosters are. Boosters are, you know, people that have gone to the university. They have a lot of right. money, so they want to donate it back to university and give them new facilities or, you know, pay for players to come to their university to make their athletic teams better. But, yeah, so the NIL but, but, but has before, kind of worked out the way. Yeah. But before that was illegal, right? Paying players was illegal. And, and, and I thought, you know, the NIL was going to make it, make it so that we would be all above board. You know, everybody would be, you know, you know, and I, I, I was not a, I maybe I should have anticipated it, but I didn't. You know, I didn't anticipate the big money that's yeah. being thrown around. Five five million dollars to go to transfer somewhere else. This that's big money. Mm-hmm. It is big money. And now, and but did he get was he did he get paid five million to trans to N, to NC or transfer some out of it? They they offered him five million dollars to transfer somewhere else. Transfer out of North out North of North. yeah mm-hmm. out of Chapel Hill, yes. Obviously, he didn't take it. I, I'm no, he didn't, he didn't take it. He's, he's staying. He's staying at at North Carolina this year, next year, which will yeah. be his senior season. And and you know, I I just I just thought that it was going to do. I thought it was going to do. You know, it was going to make it so that you know you play in a charity golf tournament or you play in char- or you play in a golf tournament. And I don't think it was charity because and he, he he hit a hole. In, this is again like fifteen years ago. It's an Iowa kid playing at Iowa. He's an offensive lineman. He was he was in this. Golf tournament, and he was like, it was like the 15th, and it was like a par three, 167 yards, you know. And he makes this amazing shot, and it goes in, but he can't accept a check because it would be paying players because it was like against the NCAA rules. You know, I thought that was gonna, you know, I thought it, my my dream, my hope was that it was gonna make it so that these kids could go and get, you know, could could accept gifts like that. Mm-hmm. And no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not against. I'm not against getting paid. I'm perfectly. I mean, I'm. I'm a good, good little capitalist. You, you want to pay me for my services? I'm gonna happily take your money. Um, right. And and so, um, you know, and and so I'm. I'm not. I'm not saying I'm. A, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sitting here saying that you know that may shouldn't be paid. I just think it's 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 become it's become a, a mockery. Of what I what I thought it was gonna be, mm-hmm. and the other thing was, it was, it was one of the first times I appeared on Gerald's show is that he had some former coach on, and and, and he was talking about how you know you're not promised a spot. You gotta earn your you gotta earn your way, and these kids don't want to wait. I'm like, yeah, why would I want to wait? Right. You know, it's like you know none of these coaches are gonna wait. Well, you know. Like, like you're, you know, if, well, um, you know what, Alex Gobleck, Gobleck, yeah, which one? At, at USF. Yeah, our new head coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, he's not gonna. He's not. You know, he was offered the. He was offered the. You know, he was offered the job. He took the job, oh. right? And and, you know, he. I don't. I don't remember where he was before. Ah, uh, he was at Tennessee. He, he, right. he was at UCF with a Josh Heupel when Heupel was at UCF. Their off their 
OC, not sorry, OC, excuse me, their athletic director, their AD went to Tennessee. He pulled Josh with him and Josh said, Hey, come here and coach with me. And now it's Golish. Alex Golish is now okay. our, um, our head coach. But yeah, he took the job. Right. right. So Golish, uh, don't get me wrong. I'm not mad about him taking the job. Mm-hmm. Right. But why would I sit on the bench for two years waiting my turn? Because these other guys, like, look at Joe Burrows. Joe Burrows wasn't going to get playing time at Ohio State. There's no way. Yeah. And Trevor Ellis, who won a national title, is making tens of million dollars in the NFL. Why would I wait? One of the top mm-hmm. teams the last two seasons, too, in Cincinnati, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, paying your dues. I'm like, screw that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If I can I, go. Well, yeah, I mean, again, the there's all it all it all it you know, it seems like when they create something like the NIL, it's like, yeah, it's gonna work. And then it it in the beginning it does what it's supposed to do, and then all of a sudden it gets corrupted. It gets and exploited for fun and profit. Yeah, and then it's where it is now. Yeah. Look, it's better than it was, in my opinion. I, I, I won't. I won't say that. It's, it's better than it was. Right. The, the NIL is better than it was before the NIL. Correct. Right. Well, now you have you now you have an opportunity for a booster to pay an upcoming kid um, to get, to buy a house, right? To get a house. For mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. To and. I, you know, yeah. and then we don't have to. There's no, there's no cloak and dagger. We don't have to be secretive and run no. around and play games. It's all out in the open, and I'm okay with that. I'm perfectly okay with that. But it just seems like there's just. I just don't know where we come up with this money. We're all in debt to everybody else, but Jesus, they seem to. They seem to be able to find some money. Yeah. Everybody complains about being broke until they want something. Correct. Right. <laughs> Correct. I thought that too. Yep. But yeah. Well, I, you know, I guess it. I mean, what, what you know, if you if you think back to the, the movie Wall Street, what did um? He was good. Can I get the actor Michael Douglas's character say? There's only like one percent of the world that has all the riches. Those are the yeah. people that are paying these kids. You know, oh, mm-hmm. five million. Oh, sure. That's pocket change. Come on. Right. Yeah, greed is good. Like Lou said, greed is good. Yeah. You know, that's pocket change. Let me give you that. No big deal. Yeah. Uh, that's all right. Good. That's a tax write off. <laughs> that's a tax write off. You know, so when I have to pay my taxes, you know. So, yeah, yeah, they have pocket change. Yeah. 51 cents. It's pocket change. <laughs> so, little, little, little pocket change. <laughs> so, but yeah, that those are the people that are paying these kids, paying the players, you know, everything. So, at the end of the day, I think we were trying to – it was supposed to make that easier. And I still think, honestly, that there are side deals that are not NIL deals going on in college sports. Mm-hmm. It's going on in college basketball. Oh, um, oh. It's just to me is, okay, how do you pay a player that, say, is a swimmer, lacrosse, field hockey, rugby – Tennis, golf, that's not a big above. crowd, you know, a mm. crowd game. Well, but that's what the NIL but that's what the NIL is great for. It's like, you know, the booster, like let's say you're let's say you're a big swimming fan, right? Let's say you were a swimmer in college, right? And you got your law degree. And and now you have now you have oodles and canoodles of money you don't know what you're gonna do with. Now the NIL is allows you to go in and support those assets. Yeah, let's, right. say you, you, let's yeah. say you're a big you're a big yeah. golf fan, right? And you want to support the USF golf team, and you want to you want to give the I don't know how yeah. many how many players are on a golf team, right? I think six per. Well, <laughs> there's all. I think uh, we just won. We just beat the Rangers in a shootout. Yeah. Um, they. Um, I want to say, but I think there's like five starters, and I think there's five backup players so let's just say 10 10, 10. females 10 males 
So you're looking at 20 players, give or take. So, so let's say let's say you give let's say you you have an extra twenty thousand dollars that you want to you know you were a golfer in, in in college, and you have an extra twenty thousand dollars you know that you you, you got a twenty thousand dollar bonus from from your law firm or whatever you know maybe you're maybe you're a car dealer you know and you go and got your business degree from USF and you're a car you know you got a car dealership and you've got an extra twenty thousand dollars laying around that you don't have that it's not earmarked for something else and you're just like you know what you want to you want to support the golf team. And so you give everybody a thousand dollars. You know that's what the NIL, in my mind, was meant to do: was be able to support the other programs that weren't that were being propped up by football and basketball. Right. Well, that's fair. You know, that's, mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what I. That's where I. That's where my mind was at when the NIL was first announced. Was that the, these players? You know, like the golfer. You know, he can he can go sign a Nike deal. You know, he can you know, or the or the swimmer can go sign a, a deal with. You know, whoever makes swim gear, you know, probably Nike, you know, or, or the or gymnast can like go sign up. To buy your offensive line, all brand new golf clubs, too. So. Right. Uh, or or the, yeah. the, the gymnast can go sign a deal with, well, yeah, Nike, <laughs> you know, you know, and that's, uh, that's, or Adidas, you know, the, or Adidas, or Adidas. Yeah. Right, right, right. Speaking you know, yeah. You know, or the track star can go sign a deal with Adidas or Reebok or, you know, or Nike or Under Armour, you know. You, you, you don't have to worry about getting in trouble for, for getting money to keep your, keep your program alive. Right. And then that's what, that's what I thought, you know. Or, and then, the, you know, the other thing was on the flip side of that was that the NIL was going to give, you know, the football players were going to be able to make money on the side. You know, the boosters were going to be able to be able to pay the players of the football team so that the so the university was going to be able to take the money that was being allocated to the football team they wouldn't have they wouldn't have to worry about spending money that was allocated to the rest of the the rest you know let's say you have 100 you have 100 student athletes right 112 athletes 93 athletes whatever your number is you know if if you have to pay them all $100,000 you know you're looking at 9 million dollars that has to be found in the budget somewhere well, you have these boosters come in. They can drop ten million. You can get five guys to come in. You get a couple of car dealerships, a couple of lawyers. You know, the brain surgeon in town. And they got money to. They got more, more, more money than they know what to do with. And they can help. They can pay the the football players. And you can that nine million dollars that you you don't have to spend on the football players or the basketball players. You can reinvest that in the university itself, and and you can get you can invest in the in the in the in the academics, and you can you can have a stem cell breakthrough that helps with you know back injuries or whatever you know. That was what I was thinking the NIL was going to do. Mm-hmm. No, I it mean, was gonna... you can you can be, you can give your athletes better better um, facilities. Yeah. Better yeah. track facilities, better locker rooms, better swimming pools. You know, replace basketball courts or yeah, know, whatever, you know. So a stadium yeah. that hasn't been re- a, a stadium that hasn't been upgraded since 1945. Uh-oh. When everybody when everybody came back from the war. That's off the field. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. it's a little the the ice rink is a literal barn. In the middle of North Dakota, yeah. it's an actual barn. They have cows in here during the summer, <laughs> you know. And okay. It seats twenty five hundred people, and 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 you know, watch out for cow shit when you come in through the door. Mm-hmm. Mo, <laughs> it's an usher. The cow's an usher, yeah. I'm ushering you, I'm yeah. Sure you in there, yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're 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 all pork. The the uh, the dogs are uh he's uh he's very very much a uh, a chicken guy. The ushers the ushers yeah. are very much. <laughs> yeah. But no, you know, and I think that you know that was that was right. my that was my hope. And, and don't get me wrong, you know, I think it's better than it was. You know, I think it was better than it was two years ago. Mm-hmm. Well, guys, you mm-hmm. guys want, want to call it right there? All right, let's do. That's two hours. I kind of, All right. kind of think we've best and discussed the playoff to, as much as we can until, uh, till next Thursday. We, yeah, till, 
till next year. About, uh, Lou, are you having a show? Are you doing a show Saturday night, or are you not doing your show Saturday? Yes. It's breaking up. On New Year's Eve, no way. On New Year's Eve, uh-huh. Not on New Year's Eve, okay. okay. All right. They'll, they'll pick up where we live. Besides, I may have to get. I may have to call home because because I might not be sober. Oh boy! Yeah. Uh, no. Oh, that would be cool. Let's put him want... in the air drunk. Let's yes, let's have, have like yeah. Oh, a drunk <laughs> yeah, okay. Lou. Oh lord. Drunk Lou. Oh, hey, you get drunk, Lou. We we'll all get drunk. We we'll all get drunk on Thursday. We'll all be blasted. We'll all... Yeah. And then we'll all go. Yeah. <laughs> we'll all go down. Kevin, together. Kevin, Kevin oh. will love that. We're all drunk on. We're all drunk the third week of January. The the first show Never. on the new network, and we're all wasted on the show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Give him another one, man. I'm drinking my sorrows away. Yeah, Give him another one. I just think I'll stay here and drink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, 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 but, you know, I want to wish everybody a very happy new year, and uh, we will be back uh, January 7th with the Enhanced Sports Show as I start, you ready for this, guys? Season 6. Congrats, Lou. Congrats. That's awesome. Congrats yeah. on that. Season six for, for me. Wow. Well, with that, guys, um, I want to say um, Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, be safe out there. Um, I have a plug. I want to thank these two guys. Uh, and uh, Gerald's missing, but Gerald came on later on in the year. Um, thank these two guys here mm -hmm. for helping me get through You know, a tough year. Uh, you know, my mom passed away and I hate to flip the calendar over to January because then I have to go through another year of, you know, when she passed away. And um, so I, January is going to be tough for me. Uh, I'm looking forward to 2023. Um, there's obviously going to be some changes. Um, but you know what? I'm, I, you know, I got to prepare for that, you know, and I'll be fine. I'm not going to worry about it and I'm not going to fret about it. Um, so I'm going to take it as it goes and see what happens. I mean, you know, who knows what might happen? I might, you know, this show might be being paid for later this, you know, later in 2023. So, and we get ourselves an IRL deal. Yeah, we, yeah, correct. We might sign all three of us might be, you know, manscapers by the, you know, by the end of the year. So yeah, I, I, I want to try one of the trimmers. I hear they're good. I use one. I can say they are, they do work. I, yeah. I use one myself so I've, um, it since, I've used it since March of 2020. So that's when I started using mine. <laughs> when I, I, uh, years I do have a plug okay. real quick for tonight. Um, tomorrow night I'll be on the Just a Fan right. podcast. Um, it's uh, by James Ludwig. I will be over on his show uh, tomorrow night at 8 uh, in the Just a Fan Facebook page. So come check me out there if you aren't sick and tired of listening to me talk. Well, I know I would be. Like I said, guys, you know, try uh, to we, we will we'll be back to start. I think this will be the fourth year of this I show. Believe so. I think four years this show will be on. So we'll be starting year four, four or five. Year, four or five years. I want to maybe maybe five. Maybe because this is this will be five years. Started. It'll be five years of the Walker Report and four years of this format. There you go. Okay, yeah. So there you go. So <laughs> yeah. we'll be starting year five. Uh, and again, like I mentioned earlier in the show, we third week in third week in January, we're going to be live on TV, um, and uh, you know all the other shows that are in the in the zone umbrella will also be on that channel. Uh, I'll give you guys uh, perspectives on how everything is going to work out. Uh, Kevin's going to give me a lowdown tomorrow. Um, I was on the call. Yep. Earlier this evening, and I was driving and got cut off, so I can't drive and talk at the same oh. time or even listen. I'm kind of trying to get in a car accident. I had some, you know, jackass, and I'll say off air what happened today. Uh, but anyway, thank both of these guys. Uh, this show will be back next year, guys, in 2023. I want to thank CreatingZenSpaces.com. Another year of sponsoring me. They've sponsored me since the show started. Uh, and I was told by my friend who said that she says the reason that she supports us is because she believes this show is great, believes in that myself because she doesn't know you two personally, but me, I went to high school with her. We were good friends. So, but she believes in the show. 
yes, you know, we'll be back again next year, guys. Um, thank you for putting up wow. with us for this, this year. I'm sure that there were some shows that you probably didn't want to see us do, but um, and if you guys do, we do have an offense, uh, official Instagram, the Walker Report underscore official. So follow us over there. Any business inquiries, uh, you can you can email us at the Walker Report official at gmail.com. I get asked daily on Instagram on uh, LinkedIn. Can I can I can I can I pro, you know can I be the person that you know advertises your show? I I can't believe how many offers I get. But I don't know yeah. if I'm paying the person, yeah. are those bot accounts that are following us or are they actual real people? So it's hard to believe. Yeah. Maybe next year we can go through as, a, as the three of us can go through. I'm still working, guys, on business cards. And as soon as I get them, I will mail a portion of them to both of you so that you guys have them uh, okay. to give out. So in case you bump into somebody, I know. Uh, Adam goes to cigar bar. If you can get, you know, people like that, Lou, yeah, pick it on the wall yourself, you know, stuff like that. And when I go to my USF games, if someone is to ask me to check, here's a card, here's my show, you know, come hear me on that. But, um, uh, guys, we're checking out until next week and next year. We love you guys. Thank you for, for being with us, being our fans all season or all year. Until then, mm -hmm. I am the Sports Shirt Bradley Walker. I'll see you guys in 2023. Until then, peace. Send it. And quick reminder if you didn't like it, that's on you because you clicked on the video. Correct.